uh, rivers here with some cool tech. And today we're going to take a look at the TronSmart MK908. This is the latest Android mini PC. And what these do is you plug it into the HDMI port on your TV or monitor and you have an awesome media player. You can play movies, watch Netflix or YouTube, play games, surf the net, or just about anything that you can do with an app on Android. This guy right here has the latest quad-core CPU from Rockchip. It's the 3188 quad-core A9 CPU. It's got 2 gigs of DDR3 memory, 8 gigs of NAND flash, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi 802.11 BGNN, which works really well by the way, and it's got an upgrade to 4.2 coming soon. It's almost exactly the same size and shape as the original MK808, but the internals are what's upgraded on here. It's got a much faster processor, more memory, uh, and Wi-Fi has improved a lot. The ports are exactly the same as well. It's got one full-size USB, one OTG port, and one power USB port. Internally, you can see the MK908 is a bit different. I believe it's got a new improved Wi-Fi chip here, and now it's got a large heatsink over the CPU and memory. On the other side you can see the antenna here, and this is where the NAND flash memory is stored. I noticed while running it that it gets a bit warmer than the MK808, still nothing that I would call too hot. Now we're ready to plug it in. It comes with a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter cable, and this would be used to plug it directly into the back of the TV set. You could probably tuck it behind there so it wouldn't hang down as well. The problem comes when you want to plug into an existing HDMI cable. You can get an adapter like this, but then you have more connections which means more resistance and the possibility of signal loss. What I recommend is a mini HDMI to full size HDMI adapter. This will give you the cleanest connection. I'll put a link to this adapter in the video description down below. Remember this also needs a power input, it's not powered off the HDMI bus. Here's what you'll see the first time you boot it up. Now I haven't done a thing to this, so it's totally stock just how it would be when you first boot up your device. You can see it's still not fit to the corners of the screen, but we'll go into the settings and fix that in just a minute. Let me just say that I can tell right away that this is quite a bit quicker, the UI is more snappy, and the mouse is nice and smooth. Here are the main apps that come pre-installed. So you've got Google Chrome, you've got your email, you've got the camera app, but it uh, did crash on me a few times. You've got um, Maps, YouTube, a movie playing app, and of course Google Play. Let's take a quick look at the settings and then we'll go ahead and I'll do some benchmarks on here. So right here we have Wi-Fi. This is a big improvement over the MK808. I put in my password and I was up and running in about 30 seconds and it is nice and fast too. I streamed an HD version of Avatar into my upstairs bedroom which is fairly far away. It's about a 3 gig file and it played pretty well up there. Maybe one skip the whole time. Here's where you adjust your screen zoom, so just slide that up, hit OK, and you're saved. Here's your output resolution. So we're going full 1080p. I believe it's running a 720p kernel, but it looks really good. It definitely outputs at 1080p. I'm running a direct HDMI capture, so you can jump up to full resolution anytime you want and check for yourself. Next we have storage. You get 1 gig for apps and about 5.5 gigs for storage. I don't know why they do this. I would choose 4 to 6 gigs for apps and put all my media on a 32 gig micro SD card. I think this will be able to be upgraded if you upgrade your ROM later. Finless Bob over at freaktab.com usually makes an option for repartitioning your memory when he does a ROM for these. I'll put a link in the video description as soon as a ROM becomes available. Finally, here's your device info. You can see it's Android 4.1.1, you've got your build number and kernel version. Now let's go ahead and run a few benchmarks on here. First off, I went and installed Go Launcher HD, so that's why it looks a little different now. It's just easier to configure is why I like it so much. So this option comes with Go Launcher. You can scroll down and we can clear out what the apps that are running in the memory right now. First off, let's go ahead and run CPU ID, and this just tells you information about the processor. So we can see it indeed is a true quad-core A9 processor. It runs all the way up to 1.6 gigahertz. Here's all your cache info. It is a Neon device. Next up is Linpack. It's just a quick benchmark program to just give you a general idea how fast things are. So I run it on here and it indeed gets about double the score of my old uh, MK808. This guy's scoring anywhere from around 70 on up to over 120. Next up, let's take a look at Antutu. And I ran the benchmark earlier and I got a score of 14259, which is actually pretty dang good. I did notice some choppiness in the graphics benchmark, so there might be some room for the graphics driver to be optimized more, which means higher points in the future probably. Also the first time I ran Antutu, it was a bit slower, it was probably because it was the very first time I booted the device and it was building the Dalvik cache, but after I waited a little bit and rebooted it, I ran it again and got a nice high score. 
This device actually came pre-rooted and they did a good job on it because a lot of times these pre-rooted devices won't run certain apps that require root, but this one has run everything that I've thrown at it, so it's rooted the right way. I do recommend installing SuperUser or SuperSU, which basically asks permission before something gets root access. Next up, I just wanted to show you how the web browsing and web pages loading goes. So it's actually nice and quick. This is just running over straight Wi-Fi, no Ethernet on here. And uh, YouTube works really well on here as well. I found the YouTube video playback quality to look really good. And personally, this is my favorite way to just sit back on the couch and watch some YouTube videos on the big screen TV. Also, you might notice that the taskbar at the bottom just auto-hides when the video goes full screen. So that's a nice option to have, even though there's no checkbox anymore in the settings. Okay, while this is running, I'm going to list a couple cons. First off, a few apps wouldn't run on here, like Google Earth, the camera app, uh, Engadget, Android Headlines. None of those apps would really run. They'd just kind of start and either close down or just kind of be stuck there loading. I'm about 99% sure this will be fixed with a ROM update, so not really too big a deal, especially considering that this is a brand new device with brand new software. Also, the one gig of storage for apps is kind of small, and I know that can be fixed. I've done it on a few different devices. Uh, it's really easy with the finless ROMs, so, but that'd be nice to change that in the future. And finally, this is just more me wishing, but I know no other device supports this, but it'd be really nice if micro SD cards over 32 gigs were supported, like a 64 gig micro SD card, maybe. Here's a little sample of the gaming on the MK908. It played pretty well, but some games just wouldn't load on here, so again, I think it needs a ROM update. Alright, last thing. I want to show you a really cool app that comes in handy a lot. It's called Droidmote, and it's basically a remote control that you use your phone touchpad as a remote for your Android Mini PC. Now, there's two versions that you'll need to download. One is the server for the Android Mini PC, and the second is for your phone. The server version needs to be on a rooted device. It gives you a touchpad remote, a regular remote, a media player option, and a joystick. The app's got so many features, but one of the main ones is just using the screen as a touchpad to control your mouse pointer. By the way, you can get the server version on Google Play for about $250, which is a good deal compared to a physical remote, and the phone client is free. It's got scrolling, it's got selecting that works really good, it's got the home menu and back buttons, and it also has pinch to zoom, which is kind of hard to come by on a physical remote these days. Pairing Droid Mode with the MK908 is a really good combination because the MK908 is so fast with the voice to text uh, that it works really well. Just watch this. Hi, this is Rivers here with Some Cool Tech on YouTube. This I'm using the voice to text on my Droid Mode phone uh, app and it's working really well and fast holy cow period it's not perfect but it's doing a pretty good job all right guys to wrap it up I'm gonna show you the video playback capabilities of the MK908 I just want to say that this guy is so much fun to use because it's so nice and fast you barely have to wait for anything at all and the Wi-Fi is, is much improved. It's awesome on here now. So huge, uh, huge plus there. Uh, really happy with it. And I'll put a link to it down in the video description down below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor and hit that little thumbs up button down below the video there. That'll give me a like and it'll help me out so much. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and you'll see all my new videos as soon as they come out. Thanks again for watching, guys. And as always, aloha.